Parallels 18 is out and I'm gonna be testing this stack of laptops. What do we got here? MacBook Air M1, MacBook Air M2, MacBook Pro M1 Pro, and I got a couple of other MacBook Airs, an M1 and M2 base models. I don't usually recommend these for running Parallels because there's not enough resources, but eh, we'll see how it works. I wanna check out some of the basics of how ARM Windows improved on Parallels 18. Just uh, kind of an update. And also I wanna see how Visual Studio preview for ARM is working with all these machines, given that we're gonna need to allocate different amounts of resources for each one of these machines. All right, <laughs> five machines is probably the maximum I can fit on his desk. Now this is Parallels 18 with Windows 11 on all these, same version of Windows, everything is the same. And I'm gonna kick things off on this side over here. This is the eight gigabyte model of the MacBook Air M1. And I got my stopwatch here. I'm gonna kick things off and let's start. All right, we're at nine seconds to start up that machine. 9.2 seconds, let's move on. This is the 16 gigabyte version of the M1 MacBook Air. And let's go. Well, a little bit longer, 9.8, surprising. M2 MacBook Air base model, let's go. Pretty good, 8.6. By the way, I'll go through the details about what settings they're using in a moment. All right, now we're getting to the big boys here. This is the 24 gig model of the MacBook Air M2 start. Okay, this is an example of what happens if you clone a virtual machine file and you move it from a machine with higher values to a machine with lower values. So this checks the configuration. It thinks that it's not gonna be good to run with the configuration that, that I have it now. So I'm gonna set max recommended. All right, let's try that again. Gonna go from the beginning and let's go. Really? I mean, <laughs> why does it keep asking me that? Okay, now I'm gonna set start because I know that at that point it's gonna start the machine. Okay, 9.8. So we're not seeing that much of an improvement, are we? Here's a MacBook Pro. This is the one, the 14 inch base model with the 16 gigabytes of RAM and an M1 Pro chip. And let's go. All right. This one, 11 seconds. Fascinating. Well, this all looks pretty nice, doesn't it? But let's go and check out the settings. And the hardware that we're using on this one is actually eight processors. And it says, using all Mac processors will cause system stability issues. Well, we don't want that, do we? I wonder why this one didn't complain. Next one, same thing. We're using eight processors. Uh, on the first one, we've got the memory set to four gigs. Here, we've got it set to 12 gigs. So whatever is available minus four gigabytes seems to be what the system is recommending. All right, same thing here. We got a processor error, uh, not error, but warning, and four gigs of RAM, 24 gig MacBook Air. Also complaining about the processors because there's only eight here as well. And here the memory is set to 20 gigabytes for the machine. Wow. Finally, the MacBook Pro using up all the processors and setting 12 gigs as the max. All right. Let's pop open Visual Studio. First of all, I'm gonna time to see how long that takes to pop it open on each one of these machines. So we're back to the base machine and start. Okay, Visual Studio took eight seconds to open. Next machine and let's go. 7.6 seconds, that's better. M2 MacBook Air, let's go. Okay, 6.9 seconds, getting better. I'm expecting a lot from you and let's go. 6.5 seconds, pretty good. Finally, MacBook Pro, 7.5 seconds on the MacBook Pro. Our winner and speed of opening up Visual Studio on a virtual machine, by the way, this is the ARM version of Visual Studio 2022, still in preview. Our winner is M2 MacBook Air that's upgraded, but just by a little bit. The base model did pretty well on that one. Now I wanna check out this test. This is the Mandelbrot test, and basically it's a benchmarks game. I'll leave a link to it down below. You can run it yourself. I've done this many times on this channel before. This version is the C Sharp version that I'm gonna run in Visual Studio, and it's implementing the Mandelbrot algorithm, which is using all the cores of the processor. So this would be interesting to see, not only um, when you're utilizing all the processors, but also the recommended amount of processors. So we're gonna target a debug mode and any CPU. We'll target debug any CPU. Now I did modify this by adding system diagnostic stopwatch. So I'm timing the main function and then printing out how long it took to execute. And let's kick this off on all the machines. Normally Schwarzenegger would do this for me, but I don't have five finger Schwarzenegger yet. That sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Schwarzenegger already has... Never mind. 
Oh, we have a winner. Well, we'll take a look at the times in a second, but the MacBook Air M2, the base model, actually finished this test first. Anyway, let's take a look at the times because that doesn't mean anything. Here's the time for the base model M1 MacBook Air, and it's 12.875 seconds. M1 MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM, 12.46 seconds. M2, 12.2 seconds. Upgraded M2, 11.2 seconds. And here we go. The real winner here is the MacBook Pro doing this test in 10.88 seconds. Now this test is using all the cores, maxes them out, and the only machine here that has six performance cores is that MacBook Pro. All these machines have eight cores, but the Airs have four performance cores and the MacBook Pro has six. So this might actually take you a long way if you're running multi-core code. Now, if we take a look at activity monitor on the host system, you'll see that um, while we are using a lot of RAM, there's zero swap being used on the M1. And in fact, on all these machines, there's zero swap being used. But if you start using these machines for something else while you're working on your virtual machine, then you might run into some slowdowns. A lot of you, when you're working in a VM, you might not only be working in a VM. Sure, you're doing a lot of your work in there, but you might have a couple of browser tabs open. I've got Chrome open, a couple of tabs here. Maybe you have a code editor open on the Mac. There we go. I've got an instance of VS Code. I've opened this on all these machines, the same exact configuration, same websites too. And Activity Monitor is showing us that there's still zero swap being used. So I'm clearly not using enough. I think uh, the most of you that are gonna be using a VM are gonna be staying in the VM most of the time. I did see some orange spikes here on the two eight gigabyte models. So the memory pressure is there, reaching quite a bit high, but we're not swapping yet. And the other three machines are okay. They're in the green. Now what I'm gonna do next is actually turn off the Windows virtual machines because I wanna adjust the hardware. So here is the uh, base model M1 MacBook Air. Let's go into hardware configuration and actually I'm gonna go to automatic, which is recommended. So this is giving us four CPUs, three gigs of RAM. Wow, we don't even get four gigs of RAM. I'm gonna stick with recommended because that's what they recommend. I don't want any system instability. Let's kick off that machine. And I'm gonna do the same thing for all these. Now, what's recommended for the 16 gigabyte model of my MacBook Air? It says four CPUs, six gigs of RAM. Seems a little low, but uh, let's go with it. For the M2 base model, they recommend four CPUs and three gigs of RAM. And the upgraded model, four CPUs, six gigs of RAM. Even though this machine has 24 gigs of RAM, they recommend six. It's just... I don't know, it doesn't seem right, but maybe that's all it needs. We'll stick with that. Now let's see if MacBook Pro is a little different. Four CPUs and six gigs of RAM, same thing. And somebody remind me not to test five machines at the same time unless I figure out a way to automate it. Take this opportunity to hit that like button, by the way, if you haven't already, because this is a pain. We've got Visual Studio open on all these again. Let's see if our test is going to be affected by this at all. And I'm gonna kick off our build and run. We have a winner and it's the 24 gigabyte model of the MacBook Air followed by the MacBook Pro and the rest of these are catching up. That MacBook Air M1 base model is coming in last. So the times are for the MacBook Air M1, 19 seconds, 0.6 considerably slower. 16 gigabyte M1 model, 16.9 seconds, 22 seconds for the base model M2 MacBook Air, 17.3 seconds for the upgraded MacBook Air M2, and 18.8 seconds over there on the MacBook Pro. MacBook Air M2 wins again. So even the machines that have six gigs of RAM allocated to the virtual machine are still not exactly equal. The way the resources are being used by the virtual machine are probably slightly different here but we're not drastically different we're just a little bit different as far as our finishing time goes one of the things i very commonly do with virtual machines is suspend them i don't shut them down because i want the state to remain the same next time i come back to the machine i can just pick up where i left off one of the beauties of having a virtual machine is to be able to do that all right down here action and suspend let's go four seconds i don't know if you can get any faster than that rm1 16 gigs suspend oh 2.96 seconds. RM2, whoa, 2.06 seconds. Suspend, 2.75 seconds. They're all really close to each other. And the last one, 2.46 seconds. 
they all seem to be very capable of running parallels and that is a surprise to me because I believed that the 8 gigabyte models will really struggle with this. They're running applications outside of the virtual machines just fine. Apparently you can get away with just having 4 gigabytes allocated to a Windows 11 instance as an ARM virtual machine and still run Visual Studio inside of it and you'll be okay. Now eventually you're going to run into bottlenecks but I haven't been able to recreate that with the test that I've done today. If you've got a suggestion and you want me to test out a scenario, leave a comment down below and I'll be making more Parallels videos in the future for sure because it's a platform that I use quite a bit. So if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.